Welcome to the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And with that, I would like to turn it over to our representatives today. We're going to start with PIA Maryland Campus. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Stephanie Ostrowski. Uh, I do admissions for PIA. This is the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Um, so yes, we are the Pittsburgh Institute, um, but we also have branch campuses. I represent a branch campus that is in Hagerstown, Maryland. Um, and uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna focus a lot of my attention on the Hagerstown campus, which is where I am located. Uh, but yes, of course, this is the Pittsburgh Institute. There's a Pittsburgh campus as well. This is all about aviation maintenance, okay? So not flying aircraft, but maintaining aircraft, working with your hands, learning a technical skill. That's what we're gonna talk about today. I'd like to start off with a really quick history. Um, PIA is a small school um, and it's been around actually though for 91 years, 91 years training aircraft maintenance professionals, but we have a very rich history in aviation that dates back to one of the Wright brothers. One of the Wright brothers helped find what is now known today as the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. And this history that dates back to one of the Wright brothers very proudly. This is what makes PIA one of the oldest and most recognized schools of its kind in the entire world, a very rich history in aviation. Uh, we have four campuses of PIA, just so you know. There is a Pittsburgh campus, of course, our flagship campus. Uh, branches are in Youngstown, Ohio, Hagerstown, Maryland, which is where I am located, and we have a branch campus in Myrtle Beach. So this is what we are, and this is exactly what we do at PIA. First of all, this is a private school. This is not for profit. And what we do is called aircraft maintenance training. So as I mentioned, no flying. I really like to sum it up into three things. If you choose to come to PIA, you will learn these three things. How to build aircraft, how to repair aircraft when they get into accidents, and then how to be able to make sure that the aircraft is mechanically safe to fly in the sky in 16 months. This is a 16 month program to become a licensed aircraft technician out of the Hagerstown, Maryland campus. After 16 months of training, upon graduation, you will earn, you will test for and earn a license, which is under the Federal Aviation Administration, and it will allow you to work on anything that flies. Anything that flies, blimps, drones, rockets, commercial aviation, uh, private jets, uh, military aircraft too is a great opportunity as well. Um, and that is in a nutshell what we do, 16 months to, to um, have a license under the Federal Aviation Administration. So PA is affiliated with all these symbols on the screen. We are fully accredited by the Accrediting Commission for Career Schools and Colleges. Uh, we accept the FAFSA for those who qualify. And my wiggly headline here at the top, very proudly, Forbes has named this school, PIA is the number one trade school in the country as recognized by Forbes in 2018. We're really proud of this recognition. It is a great opportunity for the right person, right? If you wanna learn a technical skill, if you wanna learn how to work with your hands um, on aircraft, it's a great opportunity. It's, a, it's the number one trade school in the country by Forbes and we're really proud of that recognition. <clears throat> So I'm going to put up on one page exactly what we do at PIA. Uh, the name of the program is called Aviation Maintenance Technician, also known as AMT. This is 16 months of hands-on training in Hagerstown, Maryland. I say hands-on, but you know, yeah, we still have classrooms. There's still book work, there's tests, there's studying, uh, but the majority of your time on campus is going to be spent in the shop and in the hangar. Um, the license that you earn upon graduation is right here. It is called Airframe and Power Plant. This is under the Federal Aviation Administration, uh, Airframe and Power Plant license. And again, it allows you to work on anything that flies. So I'm gonna take a moment to break this down. What does this even mean? What is Airframe and Power Plant? If you choose to come to PIA, this is what we will teach you. Airframe is the outside, it's the metal body structure of the aircraft. So you will learn how to work with sheet metal, 
you're going to learn how to weld. Uh, you're going to work with composite fiberglass lightweight materials that aircraft are made out of. And all the components of the landing gear are known as airframe. Power plant is just another way to say engine. On campus, we have all different types of aircraft engines. You as students, you will learn how to take these engines apart. You're gonna learn how to identify and measure every single piece of these engines. You will put them back together again. Uh, you're gonna roll engines outside of the hangar and you make sure that they start up properly. What you are is a problem solver, a troubleshooter, and you work in small groups. We do just about everything in small groups to simulate how you actually work in this industry. On one page for the Hagerstown campus in Maryland, this is exactly what we do. 16 months to get your airframe and power plant license. So uh, 16 months, not a very long time to go to school, right? So I like to put a good bit of emphasis on after graduation, what are you going to do? Uh, we have a department of people called Career Services. Their job is to help you find a job. The graduate employment statistics look like this. 95% of our grads here in the green got jobs after graduating and will help you through that process. We're gonna start with resume writing. We'll do mock interviews to get you prepared how to speak in an interview. We will link you up with employers for interviews that are suitable for you. If you have a specific city and state you wanna live in, a particular type of aircraft you wanna work on, uh, these folks in career services will help you do that. A great opportunity to get a job in this industry. Requirements. If you would like to come to PIA, I need you to be a graduate of high school. Um, also, we suggest that you take math of algebra or higher. Um, just to help with your success in the program, uh, this is really two birds, one stone. Whatever math it is you take to graduate high school will be fine, but we do suggest algebra or higher if you can. Your test scores, SAT and ACT scores are not required. These types of test scores just don't really tell us how good or how bad you're gonna be in this type of program. And for that reason, we just don't need to see them. There's no mechanical, no aviation experience required at all. You are going to learn everything from the ground up together with your class. You will crawl, walk, run, right? So there's no prior experience needed. I need you to have an interest in learning a technical skill. Background checks, please keep your nose out of trouble. If you would like to be in the aviation industry, there are background checks here for jobs. One last time to wrap it up, 16 months is how long our program is. It is called Aviation Maintenance Technology, AMT. My last slide here, my QR code, if you would like to get on our mailing list or you can type in pia.edu slash learn more. I have a virtual campus tour that I'll share in the chat box as well. If you would like to see what campus uh, in Hagerstown looks like, Thank you for watching this with me, Stephanie Ostrowski, Admissions for PIA. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, PIA Maryland campus. We're now gonna move on to Wheeling University. And Wheeling University seems to be a little technologically challenged. Uh, <laughs> Looks good. Oh, I want. There we go. I think we're up, huh? Maybe. Yes. Except it started at the end. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Filling in. Uh, my name is Jennifer Board, and I'm with the Office of Admissions at Wheeling University. Um, and we are located in the panhandle of Western of West Virginia. So if you're looking at a map, it does look like the little uh, Eastern panhandle. Um, we are a small liberal arts institution in the state of West Virginia. We are the only campus based Catholic institution in the state, um, and that is campus based. Uh, we are all about life, leadership, and service. So we are about educating you for life beyond our walls, uh, creating student leaders, and preparing you for a life of service after you leave uh, Wheeling University. So again, we are small, um, but we do have students coming from 15 countries and 33 states. Average class size is kept at about 15 students. Faculty-student ratio is 11 to 1. Um, so we do pride ourselves on um, being able to give individual attention. 
Um, we are less than a thousand students. So it, I, I tell people that um, we're small, but we're not, you know, too small. Um, you know, it is very much about family and a sense of community on our campus. So our students, you know, even though we're small, they are involved. Um, they are, you know, um, doing mentoring opportunities. They are doing internships. They are, you know, involved in campus ministry. Uh, they're involved in small groups. Uh, it used to be prior to pandemic that we were all about service to our local community. The pandemic has definitely um, changed um, a lot of that right now, but there, um, in normal times, our students were serving 20,000 hours a year. And that service is service that is not required. It tells you a lot about what the culture is on our campus. Um, so what is there to do? Some people think it's small. So what is that, you know, what do you have? We do have a lot of clubs on campus. Um, we are um, an NCAA Division II school, part of the Mountain East Conference Division. So with, you know, 19 sports on our campus, there is typically always something going on, um, whether that's, you know, a sporting event or a club activity. You know, um, so there's there's there is a lot to get involved in. This is just a small list, you know, of of some of the you know the the bigger clubs on campus. Many are surrounded around major specific programs, while others are campus activities or Black Student Union, intramural sports. Um, we have a newer one that is for nursing students um, to get involved. And, you know, I went to a big school, so I tell students, you know, at a small school, if we don't have the club, guess what, you can create one of your own. Um, so it, it is a unique opportunity for some students to start things on our campus that perhaps we didn't already have. Here's a little bit, uh, you know, a, a slide that shows um, the men and women's teams that we have on campus. Again, we are an NCAA Division II school, part of the Mountain East Conference. Um, with the exception of rugby, our rugby team is a D1A program. Um, so um, they're they're playing, you know, schools like Ohio State, and Notre Dame. It's 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 very um, unique, but. Um, so yeah, again, there's you know a lot going on, particularly um, this year right now, since all sports are being played, you know, in the spring term um, in the Mountain East Conference. So it's it's definitely going to be a crazy kind of excitement. Um, at, you know, every liberal arts school um, is has a general education curriculum, and ours is designed um, very much around our um, principles of life, leadership, and service. So we're trying to come up with, you know, courses that are going to um, teach students how to effectively communicate and, you know, reading, writing, speaking, um, but also to think of, you know, um, ethics and how, you know, things apply in the real world and to look at the bigger picture. So the, the cores, you know, you can see between 33 and 35 hours. Students do have flexibility in some of those categories of courses, and this is consistent across every major. So no matter which major you pick, students are taking courses, um, you know, in all of these categories. Here's a list of our programs. Um, and while we're small, we do have, you know, um, programs in uh, mainly, you know, the health sciences, um, the humanities, education, um, nursing, you know, businesses, you know, I think of a big major, you know, in most places. Um, we do have graduate programs on our campus, not a lot, but we do have a handful of grad programs and some professional certificate programs that a lot of undergraduate students are finding that they can um, pair those with their undergrad program that makes sense. So, you know, maybe a business major wants to tack on an integrated marketing communications, you know, certificate. Um, but this is, you know, um, just a, a snapshot of our, of our majors. 
We are rolling admissions um, at Wheeling U, which means we have no deadlines. Um, we will have people apply the week before we start. Um, so it, it always um, is, is exciting. We are a common app school as well as um, we have our own site hosted application. And I need um, high school transcripts and um, I do not need test scores. We have went um, test optional right now with the university. Um, due to the pandemic um, and I, I am, you know, I think that will stay for the foreseeable future. So students can submit test scores, but um, we do not require them. Having said that, athletes will still need to do what they need to do to um, take care of being eligible with NCAA. Many students, you know, high school students now are taking um, dual enrollment credits that is becoming um, increasingly popular and we do transfer in um, credits. We just tell students that we need that college transcript separately from the high school transcript. Individual uh, campus visits, we are doing campus visits in person, though we are limiting uh, how many we're bringing. So we do have families coming um, to campus Monday through Friday. 100% of our students do get academic scholarships. Um, every, every single student accepted gets an academic scholarship. And here's just a, you know, those range eight to 16,000, depending on a student's GPA right now, GPA alone, since we're not requiring test scores. And this is just more with our, um, you know, scholarships. Now, because we're division two school, athletic scholarships do stack on top of merit. Um, but we in admissions stay out of that conversation and that's between students and coaches. Um, so again, that is um, Wheeling University. My name is Jennifer Board. Um, our contact information is up there where you can get a hold of any of us. Have a good evening and thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Wheeling University. We're going to move now on to West Virginia University, Potomac State College. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cassie Weiss, and I'm an admissions counselor at WVU Potomac State College. And I'm excited to share with you a little bit about our campus tonight. To kick things off, let me welcome you into Kaiser, which is nestled right in the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia. And we're just over three hours away from Washington, DC, Pittsburgh, and uh, Northern Virginia, and as well as Morgantown, which is the flagship campus of WVU is only about 90 minutes away from us. On our easily navigated campus, you're able to reach everything you need in just a short walk. And our students live right in the heart of campus where they're surrounded by a really family-like community where they're gonna be able to find their mentors and their friends that they're gonna be able to build relationships with. They're gonna be able to use all the way up through graduation and beyond. So to tell you a little bit more about who we are, we are part of WVU. So we are one of West Virginia University's three campuses. On our campus and at Potomac State, you're gonna get the best of both worlds. You're gonna get a big time curriculum just like you would in Morgantown, but delivered in a much smaller setting. You're gonna be able to enjoy class sizes of about 22 students on the Kaiser campus. We are considered one of the most affordable institutions in the country. We are the home away from home for just over 1300 students in one of our uh, five residence halls available on campus. We do have 12 different athletic teams that compete on the JUCO or junior college level. And the best part, it's free to apply and we are test optional all the time. So no test scores required. On our campus, we do have a lot of options for you to forge that pathway to your future career. We have over 60 majors available and a variety of degree options. So we do have two year degrees, which are our Associates of Applied Sciences, where you can complete your two years, graduate and go out and start your career right away. We also have two year transfer degrees, which are our Associates of Arts programs, where you complete your first two years here with us in Kaiser, and then you can move on to another university, whether it be WVU Morgantown, Beckley, or somewhere else. We do also have two different options where you can do your full Associates of Arts program online for business administration and general studies. And then we do also have six different four-year bachelor's degrees programs available right here on the Kaiser campus, including the nursing BSN program and our sustainable agriculture entrepreneurship program, which is really unique. We all know that college can be hard at times and sometimes you're gonna need some help. Well, our Mary F. Shipper Library is a great resource for that. It houses our academic success center where all of our students can get tutoring for free. 
So we have professional tutors available in math, science, and English, and all you have to do is sign up for it. It's completely free for all of our students. All Potomac State students also have access to all of the WVU online databases. So you can reach hundreds of thousands of scientific journals, magazines, and more right on your fingertips on your own computer anytime, anywhere. So now you're seeing our rates for the 2020-2021 school year. As you can see, all of our tuition and fees, including room and board, um, depending on, these can fluctuate a little bit, depending on which room style you choose and um, how many meals you choose for your meal plan, but it's just over $13,000 for a full year, so two full, two full semesters right here with us in Kaiser. And we do have a variety of financial aid options that are available for you to help you pay for those costs. So we'll start off by talking about our scholarships. So one of the cool things about our scholarship programs is there are no separate scholarship applications necessary. This is mirrors the same process in Morgantown, and we try to offer as many scholarship tiers as possible so that everyone has a chance to earn a scholarship. So over on the right side of the screen, you're seeing the chart for the Scholarship of Distinction program. So this program does use both your GPA and your ACT or SAT scores in order to determine what scholarship level you would earn. That is the only thing that we need test scores for on this campus that we are test optional for admission. One of the cool things that we're starting in fall of 2021 are completely test optional scholarships. So our Go First scholarship program will be starting and as long as you have a 3.0 or above, you will be able to earn some sort of scholarship without submitting test scores with us. So lots of options there. Um, the important thing as far as financial aid goes is of course to submit your FAFSA because you can earn anything from loans to grants to federal work study. So you have to submit that federal free application for federal student aid. Speaking of grants, WVU Potomac State College is a proud participant of the West Virginia Invest Grant Program. So what this means is that you can earn an associate's degree from Potomac State without having to pay tuition. So you can save about $10,000 if you apply for the West Virginia Invest Grant Program. So at Potomac State, we offer 23 majors that qualify and they're in seven different fields. And it's really easy to participate. You just have to complete three steps. All you have to do is fill out that FAFSA. You have to apply for admissions to Potomac State College, which again is free as well. And then you have to fill out the West Virginia Invest Grant application at wvinvest.org. If you do have any questions about West Virginia Invest Grant, it's really great to reach out to our financial aid counselors at the psc finaid email address. As I mentioned earlier, our students live right in the heart of campus in one of our five residence halls. We have a variety of living options available, including suite styles, single rooms, and traditional double rooms. All of our residence halls have air conditioning that all have laundry facilities, they all have Wi-Fi and cable access, and they all have study lounges available. We also have two different uh, dining options available in University Place Residence Hall, and you can enjoy up to 19 meals a week in uh, one of our dining facilities, depending on which meal plan you choose. So college isn't just about academics, right? So you wanna build your community and build your network at the same time. So there's lots of options to do that. At Potomac State, as I mentioned, we do have 12 different intercollegiate athletic teams that compete at the junior college level, including our esports team, which was just recently crowned the Big 12 Madden League champions, which is really awesome. We, ran it, we represented WVU in the Big 12 tournament. We do also have over 30 student run organizations. And if we don't have a club that you'd like to start, easy peasy. All you have to do is fill out an application and find an advisor and we'd start that club for you. We also have a student rec center that has lots of space for you to work out on, including weights, cardio equipment, there's a yoga studio, and outdoor recreation equipment is available as well. And lots of outdoor opportunities surround us uh, where we're located right here in the mountains. Lots of state parks are really close. If you want to learn more about Potomac State College, we have lots of virtual options for you to connect with us. You can find those at the PSC Visit website, including our virtual tours, our continual climb event. We're in, we'll be doing that next week. Um, on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th, and that's an application event. So if you have questions about that, I encourage you to look up the information on our PSC visit website. And one last reminder, make sure you apply. It is completely free, no application fee. And again, no test scores required. And we even offer test optional scholarships as well. I thank you for joining us this evening. And I hope to welcome you into the WVU Potomac State College family in the future.
great. Thank you so much, West Virginia University, Potomac State College. We're now going to hear from Shawnee State University. Good evening, everybody. Just give me one second here and I'll start sharing my screen. Okay, my name is Kelsey Jenkins and I am an admissions associate at Shawnee State University, which is located in Portsmouth, Ohio. We are a four year public institution. Um, if you're not familiar with Portsmouth, we are about an hour and a half away from Huntington, West Virginia and just about two hours and 15 minutes away from Charleston, West Virginia, right along the river. As I mentioned, Shawnee State is a four year public institution. Um, we're accessible, we're an open access institution, meaning that we do not require a minimum GPA or ACT score to get accepted into the university. We do accept all of our students. This year is a little bit different. We are um, test recommended as opposed to test optional, meaning that if you've taken the ACT or SAT, we strongly recommend that you do submit those test scores to us for admission and scholarships. But if not, we are so are offering a free uh, remote placement test for admission and the opportunity to receive scholarships merit-based as well. So our application is super quick and easy and it's always free. We are both on the Common App or on our website, shawnee.edu. The application takes about 10 minutes to complete. So I recommend that you complete it as soon as possible to lock in your scholarship if you are eligible for any. Um, some of our top majors are our plastics engineering program, um, which is the only one of its kind in the Midwest. It focuses a lot on injection molding. We have great health science programs, education, business, musical theater, and a nationally ranked video game design program, which I'll get into in just one second. This is the slide that I'll spend the most time on. Um, as I mentioned, we are nationally ranked by the Princeton Review in game design. So if you're interested in game design, Shawnee State is the place for you. We actually have two nationally ranked programs with game design. One is a bachelor's degree in engineering, which focuses on the development and the coding of games. And one is a bachelor's degree of fine arts, which is more of like sound design and an animation of game. Both of them work very collaboratively and they are very successful programs. We like to say Shawnee State is a public school cost at a private school field, meaning we are very affordable. We have low tuition, one of the lowest tuitions, certainly in the state of Ohio, but all in the tri-state area of Kentucky, West Virginia, and Ohio. Um, so you get that affordable education, but we only have about 3,400 total students uh, with a uh, 16, 15 to one student to faculty ratio. So class sizes are very small. You're gonna get to know your classmates, roommates, and all of the faculty and staff very well on campus. So you'll get a really hands-on quality education that's very personable for a very low price as well. As far as athletics, Shawnee State is in a IA Division I, meaning we can offer athletic scholarships as well. We do play a lot of schools in Kentucky, West Virginia, and Georgia, and Tennessee. Um, we're primarily the only uh, institution in Ohio that we do play. Um, we do have an esports team that goes along with our game design program. If you are interested in athletics at Shawnee State, you can just reach out to me and let me know and I can get you connected with our coaches. Shawnee State is also currently open for in-person visits. Um, so you can book those online as well. And there is a section to book if you would like to meet with a specific coach or a faculty member in a specific program to utilize the, your whole visit. That is a great way to get connected with the major that you're interested in. We do have over 60 clubs and organizations on campus based off of majors, interests, diversity and inclusion. Uh, we also have apartment style housing. So our apartments are all within walking distance to campus and they are um, fully furnished. They have kitchens, cable, Wi-Fi, multiple bedrooms and bathrooms. And all of our students can have cars on campus even as freshmen. And then we do have study abroad opportunities as well. So applying to Shawnee State is easy. You just apply online on the Common App or on our website. Send us your transcripts and test scores or that placement test I mentioned. And then that is all we need for admission. Then um, what we do separate our students into three categories. So if you are general studies or a college admit, you will start taking courses in the fall of your freshman year. 
Um, however, if you're remedial in two or more areas of English reading and math based off of your placement tests or your test scores, we do have a Summer Bridge to Success program, which is a free seven week program to make up all of those courses in the summer. It saved you a lot of time and a lot of money so that you can start the fall fully college ready. And then um, the out-of-state tuition, you do not have to worry about that because we do have opportunity for our West Virginia students to qualify for in-state tuition no matter where they live in West Virginia. All you need is a 2.75 GPA, um, an 18 or higher on the ACT, an 870 on the SAT or the equivalent on your placement test. Our campus has been completely renovated within the past two years. We have a brand new pool, rec center, athletic center. Our housing has been renovated. This is our engineering building with our gaming students, as I mentioned. And here's our scholarship matrix and the cost of our attendance and in-state and out-of-state tuition. Um, you will see that our priority scholarship deadline has, applied, has passed, but we are still offering scholarships until May 1st. Um, those are as funds are available, so I strongly recommend you apply as soon as possible and send us your FAFSA information. So we will be offering merit-based and Shawnee State Development Foundation scholarships until May 1st. And we do have a dashboard throughout the entirety of the pandemic to um, have answer any frequently asked questions. You can reach out to us. And yes, Shawnee State is booking in-person tours for both campus and housing. This uh, slide focuses a little bit more on what we do on campus uh, from our College Colors Day, all of the events, athletics, um, some of our student groups on campus. And again, my name is Kelsey Jenkins. Here's my contact information. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me. And again, uh, feel free to book your visit to Shawnee State and apply now. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Shawnee State University. We're now going to move on to our final institution of this portion, and that is Shepherd University. Awesome, thank you so much. Hi guys, my name is Lacey. I'm an admissions counselor at Shepherd. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about today about what makes Shepherd unique and how you just might end up finding yourself belonging here with the Ram fam. Um, so a big part of what Shepherd has to offer is our location. We are in the tip of the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia. This is our campus. We're actually on the Potomac River. You cross that river, you're in Maryland. So we get students of course from West Virginia, but also Maryland, DC, Virginia, and if you look Look at where we're at in the map. We're just about an hour and a half from DC, Baltimore, other major cities like Richmond, Pittsburgh. So a lot of our students, when they're doing doing internships, research projects, practicum, they are getting those opportunities in the DC Baltimore area. And that's where a lot of their job offers are coming from post-grad as well. Um, I really like our campus because I think you get the best of both worlds. So we're a small public liberal arts school, kind of in a little hippie town, but we're still really close to these big major metropolitan opportunities and areas. So a little bit about our Shepherd students and the student profile. We are under 4,000 students at this point, 60, 40 female to male. 60% of our students do come as in-state West Virginia students, but the other 40% offer representation from all 50 states as well as 31 countries. And that number is just growing, which is fun. So academically here at Shepherd, we offer over 100 majors. Some of our most popular programs right now are nursing, biology, pre-med, health promotion and exercise science, education, psychology, business, just to name a few. Um, criminal justice is really big for us as well. Our average class size is 16, and it's a 14 to 1 student faculty ratio. And you'll probably have noticed that with a lot of the schools that presented today, they also have um, smaller class sizes and a really strong student to faculty ratio and I don't think I can emphasize enough how important and what an advantage that is for you as a student. Um, I had a friend who graduated from Shepherd and about three months after graduation one of his professors reached out and was like hey I saw this job and I thought of you and I think you should apply and put me down as a reference and that was one of his first jobs after college and that was three months after he graduated um, and those are the kind of connections that you're making in the classroom so a lot of support a lot of connections it's so much more than your professors knowing your name they're gonna look out for you for opportunities they know what you're interested in so it's a really big advantage for you as a student no matter where you end up going 
learning. So some support services we offer here at Shepherd, we have TRIO for first generation students. Our Shepherd Success Academy has success coaches on staff that'll work with you on any skill set. So if you're struggling to study for tests or to take notes during class, you go to them, they'll help you work on those skills. They're your personal cheerleaders, they're awesome. We have our advising center so that if you're feeling like you need to change your schedule or maybe even change your major, they're the go-to for that. Um, I was the kind of student who I walked in the door and I wanted to map out the next four years of my life. So I sat down with an advisor and they did that with me. We have free tutoring for all of our students for every subject. And these are just some of the resources we offer. So as far as career prep goes at Shepherd, we are just as invested in the resources you get inside the classroom as well as the opportunities you get outside the classroom. So some of the ways our students are preparing for their career field now while they're still in school, they're doing internships, um, clinical rotations for nursing students, student teaching for our education students, and other field experience and research opportunities. Um, almost all of our programs during your junior or senior year have practicum and research opportunities and internship opportunities where we have connections so that you can get class credit while you're also working in the field. Um, that's a really big deal because when you're filling out a resume, you get a degree that's just one line on your resume, right? It's all the other stuff that you do to build up your resume that are going to help you find a job post-grad. So on campus, just to touch base with this, we have over almost 100 clubs and organizations. Um, some of those include like our river riders who go kayaking on the Potomac, as well as affinity groups, Black Student Union, Alianza for our Hispanic Latinx popul student population, um, and more. We have lots of campus events and festivals. And what's really fun about Shepherdstown is that if there's not something going on on campus, there's probably going something going on in Shepherdstown. We love our parades and our festivals and our Founders Day around here. So there's always a way to find fun and get involved, whether it's on campus or in town. And then we are a D2 school. So football is a pretty big deal for us. We do have students who get recruited to professional teams, um, the Ravens, Bears, most recently, even the Eagles. Um, and if you come to campus on a game day, our stadium seats about 6,000 and it is full every game day. Students, community members, alumni, they all come out for the big game. And as far as living on campus, we guarantee housing and offer three different housing styles. Traditional style, like you see in the movies, you and your roommate are sharing a room. You walk out into a long hallway of rooms. Everyone in that hall shares a bathroom. The suite style gives you a little more privacy with no more than two to four people to a bathroom. And then of course the apartments where you have a kitchen area, a living room area, and then your own private bedrooms. And we have four major dining locations on campus. One of those does feature our Starbucks. You'll probably see me there a lot if you ever come to visit campus, as well as our Riverside Market, which has a rotational menu. So they rotate their menus. So they offer authentic Indian cuisine, Mexican food, um, Asian cuisine, and they're rotating that all the time. So there's always fun, different options. And then other dining locations include the Wellness Cafe and our Wellness Center. And they do special smoothies, so like protein smoothies, you can add a shot of protein, whatever you want. And then our Rams Den, which is our biggest all you can eat option on campus right now. So let's get a little bit into the money. Um, I've talked a little bit about academics and the social life on campus, but being a financial fit is just as important as being an academic and social fit for you. So if you're coming to us as an in-state West Virginia resident, then you're looking at this 18,000 number right here. Don't let that sticker price scare you off. We have automatic scholarships that you can qualify for without even applying. So our academic scholarships for in-state students listed here start at one to 3,000 per year. They're ruined renewable for every year and we do consider we need GPA and test scores to qualify for those and we do have a test optional scholarship option for the fall 2021 school year so if you're concerned about that you don't have to worry about it. And then for getting in the door, all we need are high school transcripts. A personal statement is strongly recommended, and we are test optional for fall 2021. And then you're just going to want to make sure that you have your FAFSA filed by October or by March 1st. It's priority deadline for scholarships, so keep that date in mind. And the next steps are from here are going to be explore, definitely visit. We are doing in-campus tours, but our virtual tour is online, and it's pretty fun, so check it out and apply. If you guys are interested in applying and you want a fee waiver, please feel free to reach out. Here's our general contact information, text, call, email. We are here to help. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shepherd University. And that wraps up the 
uh, presentation portion of our event today, we're now going to move to a Q&A portion. And we're going to have each of our expert representatives here share some tips and advice for you. So the first question that I'm going to ask each of our representatives to answer is, um, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're going to start with Wheeling University. Um, I would say, I mean, my biggest advice is to keep your options open, um, keep an open mind, um, you know, maybe try big schools, try small schools, try private schools, try public schools. Um, I, I think that my biggest thing would be keep an open mind. Um, you'll know the right fit when you've been there. It just feels right. It feels like it's going to be home. And secondly, I would say, um, you know, Lacey mentioned this in, in her talk was, you um, you know, don't get sticker shock on, on, on anything, you know, go through the process, go through all the financial aid options, and then, you know, compare your financial aid packages to see what's going to be best for you and your family. But don't rule something out just because you think, oh my gosh, I can't afford that. That would be my best advice. Great advice. How about from West Virginia University Potomac State College? What's your advice? Well, I'm just going to introduce myself quickly because I wasn't one of the presenters. My name is Jenna Wilson and I am one of our admissions counselors. My advice would be to don't be afraid to ask questions. So often I'll have students who say, hey, I don't want to bug you, but please reach out to us. We're here to talk to you. We wanted you to join our visits and our events. We plan them for you. So don't be afraid to get all the information and ask all the questions because this is a big decision and we just want to help you get that information. To piggyback off of what Jenna said, I would say one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give is know what you don't want. Know if you want if you don't want to live in a big city or if you don't want a small school, if you don't want a certain program, know what things are going to make those colleges fall off your list so you get to the ones that you're really desiring to go to. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you so much. How about Shawnee State University? What advice do you have? So my best advice, um, I know everybody's still getting used to the virtual world, but strongly use all of the sessions that you can attend, all of the virtual visits that you can. I know a lot of institutions have posted their virtual tour and housing tour on their campuses um, and contact information will definitely be available. So take the virtual tour, um, visit campuses as much as possible, um, and then definitely reach out to the Office of Admission with any questions whatsoever and they'll, they'll get you pointed in the right direction. Great tips, thank you. Shepherd University? Um, my college search pro tip especially if you're applying for a lot of schools, ask for fee waivers. If you're applying for five or more schools, those application fees can really add up. And I know here at Shepherd, we will give you a fee waiver with no hesitation. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for that. Um, and of course, to echo everything that everyone else has said, that's awesome advice you're getting here tonight. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Well, you all are the experts, so we appreciate you sharing that with us. Our next question is actually going to help us get to know a little bit more about your institutions though. So the next question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we're gonna start back at the top with Wheeling University. Um, okay, so I, I'm not an alum. I feel like um, a lot of times, you know, these questions, the super fun answers are the people that went to school there, right? Um, so I'm just speaking from experience of working there. Um, some, and we're not doing this right now because of the pandemic, but we have our own um, version of American Idol and America's Got Talent. Um, and they are so much fun and so popular with our campus um, you know, population. And it's just awesome to go and see you know, students that you've helped recruit and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know he was such an accomplished piano player or this one does this and this one's a musician, you know? So it's just, um, I really enjoy that and I miss it so much. Uh, and they would actually take volunteers for people that work on campus to serve as judges each week. So we would get to participate as a judge. So super fun, but yeah. <laughs> Great answer, thank you. How about from West Virginia University, Potomac State College? 
I would have to say that I love our homecoming and parent weekend. It's kind of a all crazy 24 seven. It seems like there's just people running around. And of course it's a little different now, but um, even as an employee, I find it so much fun. There's music on the quad and food and I'm partial to free food, but I do love just everybody gathered around kind of in the heart of our campus and really having a great time. I'm gonna speak a little bit about our connection to WVU. Um, so as I mentioned, we're only about an hour and a half away from the flagship campus in Morgantown. And one of my favorite traditions connected with the entire WVU system is that song of country roads. There's nothing like being in that, the football stadium or the basketball arena with 60,000 of your closest friends, arm in arm, singing country roads after a big win. There's nothing like it. And our students get to take advantage of that because we're not too far from that campus either. So that's one of my favorites. Great, thank you so much. Shawnee State University? I would say our finals breakfast, and again, we're not doing it so much now because of the pandemic, but for uh, fall and spring semester, we would have a finals breakfast for our students um, for finals week, and it would actually be breakfast for dinner, and um, you know, it'd be at 8 p.m. and all of the faculty and staff would serve as volunteers serving the food to the students, and uh, you know, we've had our deans and our president serving the food, so it's it, it's fun for everybody on campus, and I do miss that. Yeah, absolutely. That's always a winner. Thank you. Uh, and last but not least, Shepherd University. What's your favorite? I have a bunch, but um, my favorite right now is our Ram, JC to Ram. I'm going to turn off my camera so you can see him. But this is JC. He comes to all of our home football games and we have a birthday party for him on campus every year. He always knows where the camera is. He is like the most charismatic animal I've ever met. So he's awesome. I love to see him. That's great. Definitely unique. Thanks for sharing. Well, I want to thank you all for attending today. Uh, this is a wonderful session and we got to hear a lot about some great institutions. Um, for those of you who are joining us live, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide on today's session. Uh, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions uh, recorded as well. And there are still additional events. I think there's one more yet this evening. So we hope that you can join those events as well. One final thank you to everyone who has joined us. Thank you to our expert panelists, our attendees, as well as those who are joining the recording. Have a great evening, everyone.